Hello, hello. We are on our way to Rosesburg Castle in order to catch some northern light. I hope. And let's see if we can get something. When will we, when we get there? No light. Bit of a disappointment. Well, that was a bit of a disappointment. But anyway, we let's go home and sketch instead. Welcome to Border of the Studio. Last time I told you I would remake my studio setup, and as you can see, I'm in great need, need of doing it. As you can see, see now, uh, everything is hanging from a tripod, a Manfrotto tri tripod. That is, don't get me wrong, very good to have, but it's yes, taking up too much space. Uh, and and also, uh, as in, as I, something else that, that makes me really want to change my setup is because the tripod itself is standing right in the middle of my 3D printer. Which is quite dumb, to be honest. Uh, but anyway, uh, as you can see here, the paper itself is recorded using a Sony Handycam. It used to be record recorded by a Sony A55, but that only had about six minutes of recording, so I changed it. Uh, I usually record myself using this little camera right here. This is a Microsoft webcam. Uh, it doesn't seem to want to work today, so unfortunately do you won't have the pleasure of watching my crotch for the, for the next half hour. And also, this is the microphone that I am recording all the sound with, and also the thing that we are going to try and change today. Uh, and what we're going to do, well, uh, you see my lighting setup here. They still don't have the cones that you saw, saw last week, but the li light stands, the these metal parts that are here that is holding the, the lamp itself I'm going to use one of those to fix this microphone on and also screw that one to, to the wall or maybe the windowsill back there and um, uh, I'm going to do something similar with this camera here and to try and fix it uh, uh, over the table like this so I won't have to use this really really heavy and complicated set setup for my recording yeah, so what we're going to do today, we're going to make a uh, sketch the fixture for this uh, microphone. But first, a warm up. Right, as I said, the microphone I'm using currently is a Zoom H2N. The first thing I did today was just to sketch up the um, microphone itself. It's good, it's good, good just to make some kind of representative sketch of anything you are trying trying to do before you are uh, actually trying trying to design so something for it. Right, the first thing I did was to go, go online and search for some uh, studio, some images of studio mi mics that I, that I uh, could do, draw some kind of inspiration from. Uh, this uh, is a good process to know because uh, this, uh, I like to ha have something that, that has some studio qu quality to, to it with this Zoom mic. And also, the next step was to just sketch up the, the Zoom mic itself. Now, uh, the f first thing I uh, the, that you are going to do if you're going to do anything, uh, uh, meaning designing or constructing anything for uh, for something, is to buy everything you you need first. I should stop writing stuff. 
and and the, and then construct it. Uh, uh, why why this uh, why why not try construct and then get get stuff? Well, uh, uh, I learned this during college that uh, I, I learned this the hard way to be honest. Uh, that if you uh, construct something before you make sure you can actually fit it to, to it, you will just make a mess out of everything, and everything will just be wrong. Uh, so, so this, this is very important. Buy, buy, buy shit and construct. Anyway, let's get started. And due to the lovely irony of editing, I realized that uh, my rambling during this video was just too incoherent for you to watch. So I had to do a voiceover on this. Anyway, this first design here is uh, well, it's a quite frankly a real co copy of, of a design that I see, see on, on my mood board in front of me right now. Uh, I, I ended up using this, this uh, as a f final p pitch for myself. Uh, and uh, yeah, I may actually do, uh, produce this, this one. This design that you see me working on here right now, I eventually just left because I didn't uh, ca came anywhere with it. It just turned out to be very overcomplicated and my sketch just turned out to be very very bad. Uh, yeah, well, my hands at this point hadn't really uh, get, gotten used to the idea of having to wor work, so all my sketches here just uh, became really, really bad. And also, I, I had forgotten to turn off the autofocus on my camera, so my so the picture will go out of focus from time to time during this whole video, which is a bit annoying. But anyway, maybe I should uh, uh, talk about a little bit about the design process itself here. Uh, now, this is what you see here is the thumbnail ske sketches that, that I do. Um, uh, this is the first process in the, in any ed designer's um, workflow, and that is just to come up with uh, with as many many concepts as possible during a, such a small amount of time uh, as possible as well. Uh, when you are working as, an, as a designer, you are usually wor working in uh, with um, a client, and they w want to have st stuff. Um, uh, quite quickly, and they w want a lo lot of it too. So, if you can work quickly and produce a lo lot uh, of designs and uh, uh, to s send them to clients, they will be quite impressed. Also, during this uh, a thumbnail process, there aren't really any rules. Uh, the only rule that exi exists when you use thumbnails is make it readable. Uh, well, what this means, well, you ne need to know what the hell, hell you are doing. Uh, I've seen people that uh, have done, done a lot of sketches and then they themselves don't, don't know um, what, what they're doing, let alone uh, clients or teachers or, or whatever. So, the, so the, this is uh, uh, quite, quite important. You just make it readable at least to yourself because you can refine it late, later on, but uh, for a client you really do, do need to make, make it good enough for, for them to, to know what uh, it's supposed to look like. It doesn't need to be, be a really well-refined sketch, it doesn't need to be a work of art, every, every sketch you do. It just needs to be so something that you, where you can show off, show off the design and just lend, uh, lend it over to a 3D artist or, or something for them to construct some, something different, uh, something with. Now, another rule that, we, uh, that uh, um, you should fo follow when you're doing this is, is sketch everything. Uh, this is a very, a very good, good rule to follow, uh, and that is because, because you, you may have an idea first, or what, what you think you, you might want, but then we, when you get it out on paper, they, then you realize, ugh, crap, this is, this is nothing, and I just wasted two hours on it. Ah. So, you, uh, in that process, you should also sketch what, what you think you don't want. Uh, at least you do that, you know, you know, okay, I can gear away from this, or you may actually um, come up with something that uh, is uh, good from that bad, des bad, bad idea or bad design. You may, you may nev never know. I have uh, actually gone through that a couple of times during this whole tutorial uh, and just uh, made it, uh, came up with uh, really bad ideas that turned out to be quite, quite good in the end. And also vice versa, really good ideas that turned out to be really b bad when you came to think about it. For instance, the little uh, globe that you see in the left of the, on, of the image, that, yeah, I, I, it just turned out to be really bad because it would be a lot of parts that, that would, would have to be made, and also a lot of uh, angles and whatnot that the 3D printer aren't that, that good at printing. Uh, most pr printers would be able to, to print that, but uh, my printer is a little, 
a little bit um, bad at the moment because I haven't stabilized it pro properly. So I don't know if that it would ha have had a de detail enough, enough to, in order to print that. And also if it becomes too flimsy, the layers of the print won't actually hold together. Another thing about, about uh, all these designs is uh, you, you may you may wonder how do I come up with so many? Well, uh, I can t tell you uh, I usually don't, don't have too many ideas in my head before I start sketching. I usually just start sketching and then can come up with something. As you saw, saw me do, doing here, I just made a few lines on the, on the paper and, uh, and then uh, draw, draw a design from it. You, you can see it and on the sketch that I'm drawing right now. Now, what I, I usually call this a conscious and unconscious design. Uh, the conscious design designs is usually the, the designs you uh, do in the beginning because uh, you may not know what you want, want in the beginning, but then you may, may not have any ideas. Then you'll have to resort to unconscious designs, meaning you, ha you have to start uh, making designs where, where you don't know what, what you're going to end up with and you're just go going to sketch for the hell of it. Uh, and also I use um, di different techniques to co come up with these unconscious designs. I use markers as you can see here. Uh, I, I just use the, the ballpoint pen to just draw lines as you, can, as you saw earlier. And also I, I sometimes use the, um, the method of using a graphite pen and, and just uh, erase a silhouette of, of an object uh, out of that. Um, so, so you just need, need to come up with uh, with um, ways on your own to come up with designs uh, to to make uh, to be, a, be a, to be as quick quick as as po possible and also as accurate as, as possible. Now this is what happens when you forget to turn off the autofocus on the camera. Uh, I actually have a little UV filter in front of my uh, of the lens of my ca camera just to uh, protect it from from damage, but uh, the camera can actually um, focus on the dust on that UV filter even though it's only a couple of millimeters in front in front of the lens. So <laughs> that was a weird, weird unexpected um, turn of events for that camera. But anyway, and uh, now. Here I am on my final sketches. Uh, I actually ended up with two sketches here that I ended up um, refining later on. And also, I am only using, uh, only doing unconscious designs right right now. You can you can see here I just make a lot of lines everywhere and just start drawing from it. And this design it didn't, it didn't turn out to be anything. That happens sometimes. You may uh, start drawing something but then realize uh, that doesn't work. So, uh, but, but that's fine. At least you you, you tried out the concept and just try, tried it yourself. If you hadn't tried it, you may never know, you may never know what you had come up with. You may have come up with something good or maybe nothing, as we did here. And also something I see here, I actually became a little bit better at at the sketching phase here as we went along because now my hands are have warmed up enough and they are just sketching along properly. Uh, well, there's not much more I can tell you about, about the design process here. Uh, well, I'm coming off time lapse soon and we will jump over to rendering some, some of these designs. <sighs> so, I think, I, uh, I think I'm done for now. But as you can see, yeah, I just came up with some, some new new designs. I just realized I really wanted, wanted a design that looked like this one here a little bit, so it turns into this one here, and then I just continued work, continued working. But uh, yeah, I need to t take a little bit uh, a pause right now, uh, but I will be back in a couple of second seconds. And uh, unfortunately, pause also also meant uh, pause for the camera because it didn't record the next bit. Now, anyway, here's here are the final results. Uh, they aren't pretty. I can, I can tell you that, but uh, at least you can see see the designs. You can see the forms and what, what uh, I'm going for. Uh, this took uh, this uh, all in all took about twenty minutes or something. And uh, yeah, you can produce a lot a lot a lot more if you just continue sketching up after this. And now, what I'm going to do is pick the designs that I actually like. Uh, I like actually the first design that I, that I made, 
Um, and I also go going to take the uh, little little uh, the uh, cir cir circular one, one you can see see <clears throat> in the uh, second sketch uh, sketch paper. Uh, unfortunately, I also took the third one. Uh, I just re realized right now, but uh, that would have been unnecessary because uh, it already, already looked the um, as much as the f first ske sketch uh, uh, I made. So this one would, would have been completely unnecessary. And then I took two uh, of, of the fi final ones on the fi final paper. One the uh, road uh, uh, vibration set setup, and also the 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 one that I ma made myself myself right next to it. But anyway, let's render. All right, now here I have a big, a big paper. This is actually an, an A3 paper versus the A4 paper that I have been sketching on. And on this paper, I I will, as I said, uh, render the, these uh, sketches out properly. Uh, and also for this, I have switched the pe uh, the pe pen for for a pencil. Uh, this is a bl black uh, Creator Co Color Car Carmina pencil. And it's uh, qu quite good. Um, any kind of bl black pe pencil will work for this. Um, but uh, however, I also rec recommend not not using a regular pe uh, pe pencil that you can actually erase because that, that will ta take a lot lot longer and your lines will not be as accurate if if you have the option of doing it, doing them wrong. Wrong. So what I will do, I am going to. First of all, separate all all the sketches, like so. And oh, I think I can move the tripod. Hold on. Yeah, like I said, also another thing, thing why I need to remove the tripod. I am constantly running into it with my chair right now. Uh, but anyway, let's see. Let's see. Uh, let's see where I li like to have the sketches. I like to have. Sketch number one, somewhere over here. I like to take sketch number two. Number two. I'm going to. I'm going to take sketch number two in the middle somewhere. Actually, so sketch number two right there. Uh, sketch number three. I'm going to place that off to the side right here. Uh, sketch number four. It'll t take a bit, of, a bit of space. I'm going to move it up here, actually, somewhere. And it'll sketch number five. I think I'm going to take that one down there. So now, now it's just just a case of uh, uh, looking at your design, uh, doing a uh, an act as accurate re rendering of it as possible. And um, also fo follow all the, the rules you know about um, cut lines, line weight, and also perspective and, what, and whatnot, and try, try to uh, produce as good sketches as, po as possible. And for this, I think I'm going to oh dear, I think I'm going to just do, do a time lapse and uh, and a talk, and um, do a vo voiceover over all, all this later on. And the biggest mistake most beginner artists or designers do is to try to make this stage first before they do the, uh, the, th the thumbnail sketches. Um, uh, why is this a mistake? Well, these five designs that I'm about to draw now, they took about 20 minutes to do, and in that 20 minute t time frame, I, had, I would have made about five papers instead of the four, four that I am. Uh, um, made, made for this video of thumbnails, so it, it will be a much less productive system to, to work trying to do a good final re renders first and uh, instead of doing thumbnails then then final renders be, uh, because you will get get a lot more designs uh, out and a lot more uh, potential renders uh, renderings uh, a lot more potential renders out before uh, before your work day is done. But anyway, most of this is quite self-explanatory. Um, you don't have to be uh, as accurate uh, during this stage uh, e either, because uh, these are actually just sketches that you are pitching for uh, what comp company or other uh, people you are working with. Uh, yes, you have to say, hey, this is uh, something we can do. This is 
and what it could look like. Uh, we can t t take one of these, take elements of, of someone, or just uh, re re redo it all, all together if we don't, don't find any, anything we like. So yeah, don't, don't be too f fussy about it. And remember, you are under a, usually under a t time pr pressure here to, to produce stuff. So they want you to produce stuff more than you pr produce uh, art. You're just going to produce designs. This is uh, this is uh, the artistic part of, of it all. Isn't that that important uh, in the sketching part here? Uh, but anyway, I, d I don't think I can talk to too much here. Here to be honest. Uh, I am going to ma make a v video on ma markers and ma marker rendering later on, but uh, in the meantime, just uh, enjoy, enjoy the rest of the uh, time lapse here, and uh, I'll see you uh, very soon. Well, that's the rendering. Uh, now, I, these didn't turn out to be as good as I hoped it would be, and uh, also, I should have picked an, another light to call, call for, for the background, I realized here uh, before. Uh, I should have taken the color such, such as this, for instance, that uh, it's just a little bit lighter. 
And doesn't co cover that, that much. Uh, this co color here just t takes up a little bit too much of the of the back background, and it, and it just steals all the attention, uh, which isn't good. It's, the attention should be on on the uh, designs themselves. Uh, why have a background? Well, uh, that is to separate the objects from the paper a, li a, li a little bit, and. Uh, uh, this is an old technique that is used uh, mostly for traditional medium like, like this. In um, uh, new di digital mediums, th this might may not even be necessary, but uh, I used it today anyway. And also, why you should ma make a paper like this is because uh, you can now see the designs a lot clearer, and you can see, see them here on the thumbnail sketch. Uh, for instance, this, this design here, it uh, becomes a lot clear, clearer oh, on this pa paper here. Then it becomes on the thumbnail and also this design, and I think also very much this design here, most of all, becomes a lot clearer on this uh, rendering here than it is on the thumbnail. Well, that's it for me. Join me next time when I will be doing something completely different. And in the meantime, click like and subscribe, and I will see you next time here on Board of the Studio. Bye!